Okay, so this tutorial is going to talk about uh, the actual editing or fixing up of your guys' solid geometries as you guys prepare for 3D printing. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and copy this guy over 60 so I can uh, go ahead and sort of tear him apart as, we, as it were. Okay, uh, and again, the first line of defense in here is making sure that your tolerance is going to be set properly, uh, right? Rhino document settings unit, make sure that that's done. Um, if you have not done that, then you are going to uh, be creating an opportunity for problems down the road. Um, that's just uh, good modeling techniques and strategies. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go ahead and explode this, and we're going to go ahead and delete this guy away so we can start to see. And I'll go ahead and rejoin this. So we're assuming uh, obviously this hole is uh, gaping, as it were, but uh, what we're going to want to be looking at when we're actually in here is to say that. Sorry, what we're going to be wanting to look at as we're in here is we're going to want to be able to um, come in here and edit this and heal this up with the various modeling techniques. Okay, so uh, what we're going to do, the first thing we need to do is we're going to need to be able to find the hole. Um, and the way that we're going to do that is we're going to use the analysis tool here and zoom on the naked edges. And you can see uh, we have a very clear representation of what that is. And you can zoom in on that uh, as you like. So now that once we've identified that, I don't really need to have that on. Uh, so I'll go ahead and close that out. And now we're going to go ahead and pull up the surface modeling tools here. And I'm going to go ahead. You can also, if we come up here, all the surface tools are, are located in here as well. I just prefer to pull these guys out for what I'm trying, trying to show you guys. Uh, and so we can come in here and we can do a couple of things. Um, we can create a surface from one or two edges. And we can use the sur uh, surface edges to come in here. And you can see that we're doing that. And then I'll go ahead and select both of these. And the thing that's nice about this is as you guys are starting to play around with this, obviously that point is the same and that point is the same for each one of those guys. So when I come in here, I can take these guys and join them up. And now it is a closed poly surface um, as you guys are going through it. So uh, when you guys are thinking about this, you want to think about the endpoints that you're going to be generating, how you can start to utilize that. Um, a little bit more slovenly uh, way of going about this is by utilizing the patch tool. We can come around here and generate this, and uh, this will probably end up being quite mad at me, but we'll go ahead. Uh, and this is not going to create uh, a really great solution because this is going to be rebuilding um, this based on a, a set of UV coordinates that are averaging out all the, the curve parameters in here. So it's going to start to look a little wonky. There's two things you want to pay attention to this. Um, you can turn off the automatic trim, and it'll create this sort of carpet that, uh, you know, you can just preview this, that expands out beyond and looks really bad. Um, or you can turn on the auto trim and re preview that. And it will attempt to try and get to um, trim that where it thinks it's appropriate. Uh, bear in mind, this is not going to actually land in alignment with the curves. Um, you can see that it's it's trying to figure this out, and it's causing a lot of heartache. But um, essentially what this is going to do, and we'll probably confirm this once it does, um, it creates a, a kind of a, a weird mess, because this edge is being rebuilt and reconstructed on 10 coordinate points, as opposed to actually use, utilizing the curve that generated it. Um, and it's going to create a mess. So, okay, that was actually so complex that it uh, it wouldn't actually generate it. So, just to give you a sense, even though we have four relatively simple edges, uh, it's not going to go ahead and do this. So, I'll go ahead and just continue on here. Um, the other way we can do this, if we know that we have straight edges, like this was an, a straight extrusion, so we know that that's a straight edge, we can lock between edge curves, so I can create lock between these two guys. When you lock, you need to select to the closest edge of the curve, hit enter, and you can see that I generated a nice clean surface. If I don't do that, what will happen is I'll select there and then there. It uses the start points to connect the surfaces, so you'll get really weird things like that. And you can see that that's obviously not going to close anything off. Um, and that'll create other problems if you are utilizing that kind of geometry in here. Um, you can also, if you know that things should be planar, you can try tapping them. You just type tap, and there we go. 
So things are planar, or you generated or modeled something, tap is an excellent sort of quick start. Um, it may close everything off, uh, it may do nothing. Um, so, and as you guys get into this, I'm going to go ahead and we'll see if we can explode this and try and create some other situations. But say we loft between this and this. Join that. You guys are going to wind up with some things that are. You know what? I'm going to just. I'm going to create a real problem for myself. Okay, so now I've gone ahead and messed with this. So that now these guys are not planar. So now if I come in here and type cap. It says we get the unable to cap one object, the open is now closed, plane or looped or edges. So now this is where we start to get to these more sort of complex issues. Um, again, if we've come in here, we can start to identify and analyze those tools, uh, although you guys can see that quite clearly where those are. So I'll go ahead and some probably the easiest way to go about this is to loft. Okay. If you guys have a bunch of triangulated stuff where you've been using polylines to do this, and I'm just going to break away here to do an example. So we have all these distinct edges in your guys here. We can select these guys, and you can do individual lofts like that. Or if you know that there's a distinct number of edges, we can start by just drawing these one, two, Three, and if you right click we can enter we can draw surfaces using the points and you can draw either three or four point planes right click is enter All right and so we can start to model these guys together because that we know the endpoints are shared we can you know that all that's going to work real well and everything will join. Now it's one open poly surface. Okay. All right. And so we'll go ahead and I'm just going to go ahead and finish this off by locking these guys. Okay. Join. All right. Now if we select this, we have one closed poly surface. All right, and so now if we select this, we have one closed poly surface. All right, or we can go in here and, like I talked about previously, SDL closed, and you have a way of array of selecting these guys as you will. Okay, there it is.